Hi, today I would like to talk about Bosch's latest generation of 12 volt drill and drivers. For some reason, there is very little information about this on the internet and YouTube, so hopefully I can fill that void with this video. These are the second generation of Bosch's brushless 12 volt tools, and I have to say, they are a big improvement over the first generation of brushless and are on an entirely different level from the brushed versions, not even comparable. I believe at the moment there are three models so far. The drill GSR 12V300, the driver GSR 12V300HX, and the hammer drill. GSB 12V300. Unfortunately, there is no new model of the impact driver yet, with the currently available PS42 from the first generation of brushless. As the name implies, all three models have up to 300 inch pound of torque. In fact, they have identical bodies just have the different chuck installed. For comparison, the first generation brushless has, this is a PS22, has 180 inch pound of torque. With the improved torque, they can handle quite a bit. Anything from a tiny machine screw up to four inch screws, or even a one and one eighth hole saw or a uni bit on sheet metal. Obviously not as fast as an 18 volt impact, but quick enough. The clutch setting can be adjusted to a very low level, so you can use it even on control panels without damaging anything. I would say 5 is about the same as you would snug a terminal block screw to manually with a precision screwdriver. The max RPM has been increased from 1300 to 1750 from the first generation. It doesn't sound like a lot on paper, but in use it feels much faster and makes a big difference when you are driving sheet metal or self-tapping screws. The brushed version can be even be compared after getting used to this, every time I go back to the brush drill, I have to look to make sure it's actually on a high speed setting. Bosch's 12 volt line has never been about raw power, but rather compactness. Although right now with 300 inch pounds of torque, I would say they can hold their own. Speaking of compactness, the 12 volt driver has less than 5 inch long body from the back of body to the front of the chuck, ignoring the, uh, the bit holder. It's even smaller than the previous generation, the PS22. Coupled with the ability to take 1 inch bit, this thing can fit in so many places that the other 12 volt or 18 volt drivers cannot. They are just extremely compact. Even with the one inch bit from the back of the body to the front of the bit, I would say it's less than five and a half inches. The included optional bit holder on the back, which you can remove by the way, it holds four one inch bit and it seems quite secure even though it's just a friction bit. The magnet on the back is something I added myself to temporarily hold a bit or a couple screws. This thing is just tiny and ergonomic and I can have it on me all day without noticing it.
You might have noticed me holding the driver like this and operating the trigger with the middle finger. For me, this put my hand and forearm more in line with the axis of rotation compared to holding it like this. And it allows it to be even more nimble and easier to use and allow me to push harder when it's necessary. A few things I don't like about this versus the PS22 is that the front is covered by a metal plate with a large gap between the metal plate and the clutch ring. While the older design has a one-piece solid plastic cover. You'll notice that I have stuffed a piece of plastic from under the cover hopefully to keep out the drywall dust from getting into the clutch mechanism. If you take off the three screws, you can actually remove the plate and the clutch ring and directly access the clutch spring and body tent. I don't know why they did like this. It just seems like an oversight. Maybe the metal plate is a tiny bit smaller than they thought it should be. Also, the lock collar has to be pulled back in order to insert any bit. Whereas on the older model, you can just directly push in the bit without touching the collar, which you have to pull to the front to release the bit. Seems just like an uh, oversight on the designer's part that uh, such a useful features being excluded from the newer generation. The last thing I don't like is the speed control on the trigger is a little bit sensitive on the lower speed range compared to the previous generation, which is much easier to control if you want to turn the driver slowly. Regardless, I just love this tiny driver and it's in my tool bag all the time. Now let's talk about the hammer drill. You will notice that I have a 6 amp hour battery on it instead of the 2 amp hour batteries I have on other ones. I found for what it is designed to do. You will hold down the trigger for a much longer period of time with higher load compared to the driver and uh, the bigger battery would stand up to the higher drain a lot better whereas if you have two amp hour battery on there you will drop the battery gauge quite quickly before it can recover back for the driver though a two amp hour battery can easily last through the whole day and much lighter and compact compared to the four amp hour 6 amp hour battery. I would say the hammer drill can handle 530 seconds and 316 tap con sized holes even on concrete easily. Well, relatively speaking for a 12 volt hammer drill. Although realistically, I have to say if you have anything bigger or need to drill more than 5 holes, go grab a rotary hammer instead. Both drill has a 3 8 chuck. I would like to see a half inch chuck to make it more versatile, but I suppose for a 12 foot driver drill, it's not too bad. I also like the mode selector ring on the hammer drill. You can directly switch from hammer to drill to driving, which is adjustable with the clutch directly. And uh, so you don't have to spin the clutch all the way to the end in order to engage the uh, the drill mode. The GSR 12 V300 is essentially the same, just shorter without the hammer function compared to the hammer drill. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what this is, it's just for me to attach the lanyard when I'm working on a ladder or on the lift. 
I've dropped this so many times with the battery flying off, but it has survived just fine. Well, not so much the uh, the bit holder. It cracked so many times it doesn't hold the bit anymore. These aren't the most powerful tools on the market, but I would say they can handle 80% of the work that the 18 volt can, and they're a lot easier to keep on either my belt or in my tool bag. And when I need more power than this, I'll just go grab the 18 volt company drill or impact with a 6.3 amp hour brick on the handle, which probably weights over twice this thing does. Anyway, that's about what I can think of at the moment. Hopefully you will find it useful.